Uh, welcome to uh, Google I.O. and thank you for coming to this talk. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is introducing a new way to administer your business on Google, uh, specifically with Google Apps. Um, so just a quick poll, how many people in the room are familiar with Google Apps and the admin APIs? Everyone. Okay. You're in the right room. Uh, so. Uh, the admin APIs are a set of APIs that allow you to manage your Google Apps for business domain or other additions um, and do things like create users and manage your domain's resources while also um, making, making it easier to perform some automated uh, tasks. So uh, this is a collection of more than 15 APIs. Um, it includes things today like the provisioning API or the group settings API or the reports API, uh, et cetera. Um, so the, the problem with this is that uh, thousands of applications use these APIs every single day. Uh, and there's like a large number of these APIs, but the developer experience of the APIs uh, can be a little bit difficult to navigate. So uh, if you break this down, actually this translates into more than 125 million requests per day. That's more than a lot of small companies get for their entire app. So here, these requests coming in are doing things to manage Google Apps for business domains. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is making things even easier. And if there's one thing that you leave the room with today, it should be with an, with an understanding that you should go home, sleep after Google I.O., and then come into work the next day and adopt what we're about to launch. Uh, because we're going to make your lives significantly easier. And so this is directly for IT admins or if you're an ISV who's developing software um, for users of Google Apps for Business, if you're a reseller of Google Apps for Business, all of this stuff is going to apply to you. So we've, over the years, uh, taken a lot of requests from developers. So the Google Apps admin APIs are actually one of our oldest sets of APIs. I've worked at Google for almost four years, and I've worked on them since my first day at Google, and then even before that. Uh, they existed. So we've gotten a lot of requests from developers over the years, and uh, today we're going to address some of those. One of the top requests was this, the ability to search and sort uh, your result sets just much more easily from uh, things in your domain. Another one is batch requests. I need to, for instance, create a bunch of users at once or get a whole bunch of information about a, a collection of users uh, at the same time. Enterprise attributes, and then more customizable reporting. And then finally, uh, I think the biggest request has been for functional parity with the admin panel for Google Apps for Business. So here we have my friend Nimrata. Uh, this is all of her information in my test domain. And you can see there's a whole bunch of information here that is pretty common. Uh, this represents uh, Nimrata in, in a, you know, a traditional business environment. So I have things here like her phone number, her email addresses, uh, which groups she belongs to, um, and also her username and profile photo. So today, uh, there's a problem. And the problem is that to get her profile photo, I have to make a, a call out to the Profiles API. And then you know, to get her username uh, and other user information, I have to make a call out to the Provisioning API. Yet another API to get things like, or another API call at least, to get things like her nickname or her aliases. And then yet a fourth request to get the groups uh, to which she belongs. So this is a little bit too much. Uh, and just a quick show of hands, how many people in the room have run into things like this? Almost everybody raises their hands. Okay. So I have good news for you. Uh, today we're launching the Admin SDK. And the Admin SDK is a brand new developer experience around managing things in your Google Apps for business domain. Uh, what we're going to do is talk about how we're going to simplify the developer experience, and I'm going to introduce a few new APIs to you. And I think what you're going to love about this is how easy it is to integrate and also how easy it is to do more advanced things in your domain. So we're launching two APIs today. The first one is the directory API, and then the next one is the reports API. Uh, I'm going to go through each one. The goal of the two APIs is to be as simple as possible, giving you all of the data you need and all of the actions you need while getting out of your way, uh, consistent. So what we want to do here is make sure that all of our API surface areas look identical so that you don't have to do you know, special tweaks or, or integrations between multiple APIs in order to get things working. Uh, and then lastly, comprehensive, we want to expose as much of the functionality in the Google Apps admin panel as possible. So when you come away today, know that you know, these are our goals overall for the platform. Uh, so the directory API allows you to manage objects in your domain. 
So this includes the traditional objects like users, groups, and org units. However, today, the uh, directory API will also allow you to manage devices in your domain. So to give you some sense of kind of what's going on here, here I have a bunch of common endpoints that you would use today uh, for things like the provisioning API or the profiles API. And what we're going to do is boil all of these things down into a single API called the directory API. And here you can see all of those endpoints, they roll up into one. So this is uh, going towards the simplicity goal that we have uh, for the admin SDK. Uh, the next one is the reports API. So the reports API is going to allow you to create just richer reports on things going on within your domain. Uh, here you can see like this graph was able to be generated with all of the data coming back. Uh, and this is just usage, usage activity of each service within your domain. Uh, another uh, way to generate a report is just like all of the different activities going on within your, within your domain so that you can uh, much more easily like do things like audits, for instance. Uh, so let's take, a, let's take a demo. So Ankur in the audience wrote uh, this demo app. It's called Device Explorer, and this is doing something new. So a few important points about this application are that it's hosted on App Engine, so it's a third-party application, and it's using everything uh, that I just talked about to allow you to manage devices within a Google Apps for Business domain. Ankur did a few special things. One, he allowed his admin to log in with uh, Google Plus sign-in, which is a new mechanism for signing users into your applications, and you can use that with Google Apps for Business domains. So that's definitely something that you should consider changing your application to use. Uh, it's just a lot easier to implement, and also it, it allows you to get all of the same access that you have um, with your application today. The next thing is uh, he used the directory API to create a device explorer here, and this device explorer allows you to manage devices within your domain. So here, for example, if I click on this device, uh, you can see all of the information about the, oops, this is all of the information about the owner of this device, and if I go back, um, you can see, if I click on the device itself, you can see all of the information about the device. So this is important because on occasion, what will happen is uh, one of your users may register a non-approved device on your domain, or somebody would lose their device, uh, maybe leave it on a train or something to that effect, and what you as the admin have to do is be able to disable this device quickly and easily. Now, it, it really gets a lot easier to do mass, uh, mass changes with tools like this. So obviously, uh, in your own business or in your own software, uh, you may need to do some advanced things, like provision a thousand devices, right? And that's not something you want somebody clicking around and doing manually. So that's where the directory API really shines. It allows your application to do more advanced, uh, advanced, advanced concepts. So here, just to take a quick, uh, simple example, what I can do is select this uh, device from Ken, and I can do various things. Its current status is approved, but I can also block it or delete it. So if I block it, and take this action, uh, it says done, and if I reload the page, you can see after the Wi-Fi cooperates that the device from Ken is now blocked. And then this has also been applied in the Google Apps admin panel. So this is one of the new features we're launching today, and this demo application is one way um, to kind of see what's going on there. So if I come back to the presentation, The next thing we're gonna do is walk through the code that made that application possible. So just to give you an idea of how the code is structured, uh, it's a very common model view controller uh, setup. Um, here the servlets act as controllers, and the view is index.html, that's really just a, a template. And then we have our servlets talk to the client library. Our data model here is completely represented by the directory API, so that's important to note. We don't really have a local data model. So the first thing we're gonna do is query mobile devices in the domain. So here you can see a method on the servlet, uh, the devices servlet to do that. And you can see actually how simple it is. So here, just with four lines of code, I'm able to get a list of devices uh, within the domain and then print them to the screen. This is uh, one of the ways that we're really trying to address that simplicity factor again, and just making it easier for you to get the data that you need out of your Google Apps domain. The next thing we can do is um, query for individual uh, devices and then uh, just return the list. So the previous method just printed a list and here we actually get the list of devices themselves. Um, and then we can also get matching devices with a query. So 
I don't know if you noticed this in the sample application, but there was a search mechanism. And I can apply that search mechanism here in case uh, I have thousands of devices in my domain. I don't have to find each one um, by scrolling through hundreds of pages. Um, that add rotor device table method is really just a, just a view generator method that uh, creates a table row with the device's information. And then taking action on a device, for instance, I blocked a device. Uh, you can see how that's done here via this take action method. Uh, so the take action method is, is really just a, a wrapper around these uh, five lines of code. So these five lines of code uh, create a new directory object, which allows you to interact with the API, the directory API. Um, and then a mobile device action, I just create a new action object that I want to set. In this case, it might be block. And uh, that action parameter is just a, a string representing the action's name. And then I set up uh, the request and I call execute. And once I call execute, this makes a request out to the API and blocks the device. So one thing that we've noticed is that uh, an easy way for us to guarantee that there is feature parity between the Google Apps user interface and the admin SDK is to use our own admin SDK to build the Google Apps interface. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to switch over here to my demo tablet. And this is something launching uh, towards the end of the month. It's a mobile cPanel. So this mobile cPanel allows me to manage my users and groups and other domain resources while on, on the go. So this works on my phone or on my tablet. Uh, and this is something that Google's going to release. The important thing to note about this entire application is it's built using our admin SDK. So we're eating our own dog food. We know that the admin SDK works and works well because we have to use it as well. So here, if I click users, you can see all of the users in my domain. And if I click on Cur, uh, I can find out more information about on Cur. So here, uh, I can do other things, like I can edit on Cur's uh, information. So uh, I could change his name, I could change his email address, or change his phone number. I could add a new phone number. Uh, I'll just punch in a random phone number here, click Done, and OK. And it updated the user on the spot. So what that just did was make a call out to the admin SDK and save that new phone number. Uh, if I come back, click Done, I can do other things. I can also suspend the user or delete the user. And then if I come back to this menu, I can also do other things like manage groups. So if I look at the All Managers at Acme group, uh, here you can see this uh, that ad, uh, admin at Ankur 10 SEP is one of the users. But I've decided that I want to make this user an owner of this group. So I edit the role. And I click Owner, and I click Save. And when I click Save, uh, Ankur is now an owner of this group. So you can see there, uh, using this, this, um, you know, this app that we've built, we're actually using a lot of the features that you would have to use in order to build your own applications with maybe more advanced use cases. So this is something that's becoming super important to us, and it's a goal for us in the long term. And I really want to sell that point, because I, I realized that previously, uh, there has been somewhat of a disconnect between the Google Apps admin UI and what was available to do via the API. And this is something that we're really keen on addressing. I know that a lot of you in the audience need to do some edge case uh, that the UI allows and the API doesn't. And so what you have to tell your users is, oh, by the way, you can't do that in my tool. You have to go to the Apps admin UI. We are addressing that point directly. So in the coming months, you'll start to see that uh, get better and better and better. So what's next? Uh, the next things that we have going on are uh, essentially improving the developer experience across the board. So here, uh, in the um, dev site, or <laughs> the documentation, oh, forgive me, let me switch my screen. Pretty new mistake right there. Uh, so let me uh, show you the documentation here. This is how it looks today. And you can see that huge list of APIs I mentioned previously. Um, and it's also kind of like difficult to find out what you need to do in order to address your use case. Today, we're launching this, um, and it's our new developer experience for the admin SDK. So here you can see uh, we've moved to more documenting use cases and not so much documenting uh, individual APIs. So if you need to manage users, for instance, or if you're new to the admin SDK, you probably don't really care that that's the directory API. Rather, you just want to see how to do it. And then later on, uh, you'll start to learn our own terminology um, as you become more and more of an expert. 
So we're working on uh, making it easier for new users of the admin SDK while also keep, keeping it uh, as good reference material for advanced users. And uh, we're also working on keeping it very up to date when we add new features uh, to the admin SDK. So in making integration easier, again, we're working on reproducing the simplicity and consistency of the, the two APIs, um, both directory and reporting, uh, into other APIs that will uh, be a part of the admin SDK. And we're also looking at giving more feature complete sample applications in a broad range of languages. What's important to note is that these two new APIs are on our new API infrastructure at Google. Uh, you'll know that like some of the previous APIs have been on this thing called GData. And GData had uh, custom client libraries for every single API. Whereas with the new API infrastructure, um, the client libraries are consistently kept up to date uh, in a more automated way. So that, like for instance, the Java client library, if you download the latest version, you will immediately have access to the latest features of the API. Uh, there's no uh, delay there. The other thing, again, that we're really focusing on is continued feature parity with Google UX. And we're starting to do this uh, by developing applications for Google um, using our APIs first, and then uh, adding features second. So with that, uh, the upcoming features uh, we're going to add more enterprise objects in the API. Uh, we know that this is a huge feature request and we're working on making uh, the availability of data just much wider. Uh, we're also working on giving powerful structured search. Um, the worst thing on the planet that I'm sure everybody in the room has encountered is having to fetch a full list of resources and then manually search them yourself. Man, that sucks. So we're working on making that just a lot better so that you don't have to do a lot of that, that uh, processing on your end. Also, we're giving a, an extensible user schema. Uh, this is a big one, so that you can set uh, more and more properties on a per user basis, uh, so that you don't have to have a separate data store for some properties about your users, and then um, use Google Apps for the other properties. Uh, we're gonna give you a login activity audit. Again, I think this has been a pretty popular um, feature request, the ability to just detect logins from users. And then lastly, we're going to give G plus reports um, and let you find out exactly how your users are interacting with Google+. So with that, uh, thank you. And what I'd like to do now is take questions. There's two microphones. Thanks. Hey, Vix, Charlie Wood. Hey. A um, couple of questions. Uh, first of all, I know there was talk about uh, push notifications in at least some of these APIs. Is that included? Is it roadmap? Is it? That's in the roadmap. Okay. Yeah. Uh, second, what is the process, or is there a process, for increasing API quotas? So uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so these two new APIs are managed in the Google APIs console, which I didn't show. If you've used any other Google API, really, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the Google APIs console. Uh, when you go there, uh, there are, there's this, as of today, this new option called Admin SDK. And when you can flip Admin SDK on and off, you can also request more quota. And what that does is it uh, sends an automated item into our system, and then we review it each week. And then that would allow you to get more quota. OK. Uh, and then finally, um, this is kind of a detail, but when you're, when you're fetching a long list and you're doing like paging 100 results at a time, right. did it make it in uh, to where the total number of requests and the total result set is actually in each page? You mean the result size, yeah. like the total number of users in each page? Yeah. Yeah, that made it in. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I'll take one from the back. Yeah, my name's Scott Howell. Hey, Scott. Um, I'm curious about the Google sign-in for external websites sure. and how this admin SDK, can you uh, assign different levels of rights to those users for those external sites? I.e., say I have, I don't know, 500 users in my Google domain, Sure. And I want to give them access to an external website. Can I manage those user levels through this? So you mean access to use Google Plus Sign In on another website? On on, on an external website, right. not not part of. Right, I'm with you. Not a Google app. Yeah. So uh, currently, you can't manage that per application basis. What you can do is is uh, revoke access after it's been granted. And what we're working on is making it so that you can control individual access. Like let's Different hypothetically levels. say that you want to add um, you know, an application to all of your users, and you want to give them access to that application specifically, but not to all of the other applications on the web. Okay. Right? That's something that we're working on. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. 
Hi. Hi, I'm Hardik from Sears. Um, the question that I had is, uh, when you are trying to add the objects, do you have the ability to maintain the history of the changes that have been done on the user profiles? Like for example, my phone number was XYZ, phone number now is ABC, can I track the XYZ as well? Yeah, so that's part of this new SDK as well. Sure, thanks. Thank you. Hi. Yes. <clears throat> is this uh, API, new API is gonna be available or is it available already for Google Apps Scripts? For, oh. For Google Apps Script, yeah. uh, so the existing apps um, interface exists already on Apps Script, and what we're working on is updating it to use the new SDK. I don't have a timeline for you, but it should be soon. Hi. Hi, this is uh, Olivier Mercier from SAP. Um, we had a, an example of uh, device management with the device approved and rejected. Uh, what are the plans uh, for Google regarding uh, um, remote uh, device management? Remote device management? Yes. Uh, for example, when the company has a, a set of uh, employees with uh, mobile devices, mm -hmm. um, does Google has plans to set up more uh, capabilities to manage uh, maybe remote device wipe or those type of features? Uh, the, so what we have today is the ability to install an application on your device that um, kind of lets you know the state of the device uh, remotely. Um, However, I don't have anything to announce today about like our plans there in, in the longer term. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rahul. Hey. Uh, I have two questions. One, uh, any any update on uh, auto sign out or timeout uh, thing uh, for Google Apps? So, if a user is signed in and he's not active for 30 minutes, is, is there something which we can trigger that uh, will sign him out of the session? That's one. And second question is. Uh, though there is an audit uh, trail which you have started on Google Docs, it, does it cover um, uh, the external files also which we upload? The, the external files that you upload? Yeah. So, uh, if, Come find me. Both of your questions I, I think I have a solution to, but they're a little bit more advanced. Come find me afterward and I'd be happy to walk you through. Sure. Thank Thanks. You. Hey. Hi, I'm Jeff Williams from the University of Minnesota. We've got, at the University of Minnesota, we have five different domains that are each with a different like um, uh, account, so okay. they're not m merged together. Right. Um, is there any way that we could leave the data in place, but have you update the metadata to kind of consolidate the domains so that we have a single um, human domain instead of having five separate domains? Uh, single domain instead of five separate. So you, you want to merge the domains without merging the domains? We want to we wanna merge them, but we don't want to remove, like copy all of the data that's in there back to our servers and lose fidelity and then copy it back to your servers. Oh. Again, because why, right? You've got all of the documents for all of the different campuses. So if we right. could log in at, like, as admin on the source and the destination domain, like be able to m migrate the users over by just mm -hmm. updating on your side the metadata that describes the access permissions that they have to the various pieces. Right. That's a really good feature request. Come find me afterward and I'd like to take some requirements about that and then yes. I can make sure that that lands. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, uh, Frank Locasio, eSource Capital, a hey. Google Apps reseller. Um, on the APIs, is there going to be work done on the APIs that go after the data in the reseller console? Is there, are there any APIs that, that what? Go after the data in the reseller console. Uh, we, we do have a set of APIs for this. Uh, come find me afterward and I can point you in the right direction. Okay. And a little bit different than APIs. Another quick question. Will there ever be the ability to change the primary domain? Change the, the primary, primary domain? domain. Uh, I don't think so. OK. Um, we have I, companies I, changing their names, and they, you know, it's. Yeah, freaking companies, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hi there. I'm uh, Chris. I'm with uh, June Star. Uh, I support maybe. Uh, you know, 12, 15 companies in Google Apps, and depending on when they were deployed, I, I have to juggle uh, two different admin consoles, uh, resort to GAM to get a lot of stuff done that I can't get done through various ones of those, and, and keeping track of who's on where and who knows what right. is, is yeah. a bit of a hassle. Is this going to supplant all of that juggling, or? Uh, it's going to definitely make it a lot better. Like, do you develop your own application? As much as, as, as little as I can, um, oh. but, but I, I do have to do some of it sometimes. So one thing I would say, two things I would say. One is that we're working on making the admin panel just more robust. 
Uh, I'm sure there are certain edge cases that uh, you're having trouble like telling your users to do, and that's where your application comes into play. Um, I'm not sure specifically in your case what those edge cases are. I'd be happy to discuss them on a, on a you know, one by one basis. Um, but we're working on making the admin panel just more robust uh, so that you can do more of these things. The other thing I would say is that um, as we're working to, to hit feature parity between the admin SDK and the admin UI, uh, everything um, that you can do in the UI you'll be able to do in the SDK. So in those cases in which you're sending you know, a user just to the admin panel to do one thing and then to your software to do something else, they could eventually have one destination. It's either going to be in the admin panel itself or in your software. Um, so come find me afterward. I'd be happy to talk about like, your specific edge cases. Thank you. Thanks. Hey. Um, hi, Miguel from uh, the Boeing company. Um, does this admin SDK plan to have PKI management at uh, one point? I, I didn't hear the last part. PKI. Sorry. Can you? PKI, certificate management. Oh. Sorry, I totally did not get your abbreviation. Uh, public key management? Yes. OK, uh, I don't think that we have that in the near future. Um, I would say that that's a really good feature request. It, you know, the um, entire product team for the admin SDK is in this room. So they're hearing everything that you say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Hey. Hey. So I wanted a plus one Charlie's request for the, um, the push notifications and the change feed for the- Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely in the pipeline. All right. And also the, the three LO, um, understanding what, what, what's been authorized by someone within the domain. Understanding what's been authorized by somebody in the but domain? They, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah um, so someone, someone approves certain requests in the marketplace, someone within your domain, just, just to know what, what has been approved by which users within the domain. Got it. That's something we can help you with. Yeah. Today? Uh, I, you, you can view that data today, but you can't programmatically access it in the SDK today. Okay. Yeah. Great. On the last, we, Charles is also talking about the, the quotas. And so I understand like the per data quota, but for us, I think the bigger, the bigger bottleneck, especially when you're trying to run in parallel, is the per second quota, kind of like the server limits. So yeah. is that? Yeah, we can, we can help you out there. Like uh, worst case, we just you know, multiply your per second quota by 80,000. <laughs> But I, I think we can help you out there. Um, I, I don't know if we have a specific like per second quota uh, set. I, I'm sure we do. No, no. Um, so come find me afterward, and we can talk about how to get your. Like I understand that case. Like you migrate a university, and while migrating that university, you're you're making constant requests uh, in one day, and you're trying to finish your migration in like less than a week or something, right? That's what you're talking about. Um, so I understand that like, in that week, your QPS is going to be through the roof. And then next week, you go on vacation. And you've been paid, right? And uh, so we can set a very, very high quarries per day limit. Um, and that would still suffice. And since there's no quarries per second limit, I think you would be OK. Uh, the other thing you could do to make that even faster is just set up concurrent requests. So like, if you thread this stuff out, you can actually send your QPS up very, very high and still get a high throughput rate. Um, for like migrating accounts or whatever. So there's there's no per second rate. Yeah. No. On okay. Yeah. Great. Hold on, I misspoke. There is one. I just don't know what it is off the top of my head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, hey. Hey, uh, Jeff Williams from the U of M again. Um, so you might not be the right person. I'm going to ask anyway, just in case. Sure. Um, when we rename a user. Sometimes the, with the API, sometimes the user's rename doesn't go through on very quickly. They don't get a, um, an alias for a nickname because we've got m uh, many domains that are, that, are, that are there. So they can't get mail for potentially a day. Um, most of the time it's not a day. Most of the time it's like right away. But then sometimes when it's not, then it, apparently there's some process that Google does to like catch up on the ones that didn't make it successfully. And then yeah. there's sometimes ones that don't ca make it from the first and the second layer of that process. Right. And we've had tickets with Google about it. And every time they're, you know, it's, it's all happy and good until we get to like the third or fourth level. And then it's like, oh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, you know. um, so forgive me. That is Google's problem. Uh, and it's something we're working on. Okay. I'm sorry that you had to endure that. I realize that that's a bad experience, and it's something that we really care about in our fixing. I'm familiar with that specific issue, okay. and it's something that we've been working on for a while. It's a very complicated problem on our end, um, mm -hmm. because, I mean, 
Uh, a lot of people don't quite understand this, but essentially when you create a user at Google that touches more than 1,000 machines, like instantly, within a matter of a minute. And, and so like keeping those machines in sync uh, can sometimes be tricky. Um, so feel free to come find me afterward or find any of the team here, and uh, I'd be happy to help you address that as soon as possible. Thanks. I just had a question about the um, <clears throat> Google Plus uh, Profiles API versus the Google Profiles API, where <clears throat> it does seem that if you have a Google Plus profile that is, mm -hmm. is locked right. uh, for some reason because you've contravened a naming convention, uh, <laughs> then uh, the user in the Google Profiles API is not returned which doesn't seem to be documented. Is that just a documentation? I think that is a documentation error. Uh, I can help you get that fixed. Sorry about that. OK. Hi. Hi, so there have been a couple questions about quotas and like, and one of the reasons that's been an issue for, hasn't really been an issue for us, but it could be a potential issue is that the result set size when trying to get user information from the revisioning API previously has only, only been 100 results per query. Is that going to change with this API? Uh, I think that's changing. It's 500 now. 500? Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. Hey again. Hi. Uh, do we have an Active Directory equivalent coming out soon? Forgive me, I didn't hear you. Active Directory equivalent coming out soon for uh, Google Apps? Uh, I don't have anything to AD, announce Active today. Directory for Exchange. That is an Active Directory right. for Exchange. So I'm, similar to that. I'm familiar, but I don't have anything to announce today. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Other questions? All right, I think I told half of you in the room to come find me afterward. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it might take, take a while, but uh, make sure that you come to our office hours, which are on the third floor, uh, and a, like a whole bunch of us are going to be there answering questions. And then make sure to attend the rest of the apps uh, sessions throughout the rest of the day. There's a lot of interesting content. Thank you very much.